Hi, this is Dr. A with your clinical chemistry review. We're going to look at therapeutic drug monitoring of cardioactive drugs. All right, so cardioactive or cardiovascular drugs are generally used to treat arrhythmias. Many of them affect the sodium potassium pump or either sodium or calcium channels. Uh, Dajoxin and amiodarone are frequently ordered therapeutic drug levels, but for example, quinidine and procainamide are infrequently ordered. Procainamide testing must include the measurement of N-acetylprocainamide, also known as NAPA, because this is an active metabolite and will affect the therapeutic range. Uh, not all drugs given to patients can be monitored. Both propanolol and verapamil are not available for testing by major reference labs. Um, and most of your drug assays here for cardiovascular drugs and others are going to be a type of immunoassay. So start with digoxin, also known as lenoxin. It is foxglove. It is a cardioglycoside. It is used mostly in the treatment of congestive heart failure, um, but it can also be used in the treatment of atrial flutter or atrial fibrillation. It inhibits the membrane sodium potassium ATPase pump and, and therefore lowers the heart rate. The absorption of digoxin is variable. It is influenced by dietary factors, GI motility, and formulations of the drug. The elimination, renal filtration of, of the plasma free from, form is how it is eliminated. Also, meaning there's an implication if your uh, patient is in renal failure or whether it's acute or chronic, that could affect how it's, you know, the patient is clearing the drug and their plasma levels, therefore. The half life in plasma in a normal adult is going to be 38 hours. Um, the toxicity of digoxin will show uh, up as GI and cardiac symptoms. And again, measurement is an immunoassay to determine the total concentration in serum. So that would be bound and free. The therapeutic range is going to be between 0.5 to 2.0 micrograms per liter. It is worth noting that newborns, pregnant women, and patients with uremia or late stage liver diseases can produce endogenous substances that will cross react with the antibodies uh, and mess up the assay there of the digoxin. Lidocaine is a local anesthetic and an antiarrhythmic. It is used after uh, an acute heart attack, acute MI, to prevent ventricular arrhythmias. Um, it targets the sodium channel, and uh, overdoses of lidocaine can cause central nervous system depression. Uh, quinidine, uh, also known as quinidex extentaps, cardioquin, or quinora, treats ventricular arrhythmias. Uh, the most common formulations are quinidine sulfate and quinidine gluconate. Um, it limits the sodium ion influx. Uh, it can be used to treat malaria too. It has a half-life of six to eight hours and is primarily elim eliminated by hepatic metabolism. And the toxicity of quinidine will manifest as vertigo, tinnitus, which is ringing in the ears, and headache. Uh, and there'll be evidence also with low blood pressure. Procainamide, also known as Procainbid, Procain SR, or Pronestol, will treat ventricular arrhythmias. Also, it is a sodium channel blocker. The therapeutic range is 4 to 8 milligrams per dl. It is toxic at greater than 12 milligrams per dl, and that will depress heart activity. And then, of course, as we mentioned, N-acetylprocanamide, or NAPA, it's a hepatic metabolite of the parent drug, which is procanamide. And uh, it also demonstrates antiarrhythmic activity that's similar to procanamide, and so they're often ordered together. Disopiramide, or mead disopiramide, norpace, is another antiarrhythmic agent. It's used in the treatment of cardiac abnormalities. It is used as a quinidine substitute when quinidine's adverse effects are excessive. It also blocks sodium channels. And at high doses, it can inhibit neurons, uh, which they also need the sodium channels, and therefore can cause hypertension and congestive heart failure. Uh, flec fleconide, um, it is used to treat tachycardia. I'm still not sure on the pronunciation of that one, so don't forgive me. It is also a sodium channel blocker. It is toxic to acute MI patients. Uh, it has a very narrow therapeutic range, and the if you get tox toxic levels, it will depress the heart and cause hypertension and bradycardia. 
Propanolol uh, reduces the heart's workload and it helps it, it to beat more re regularly. It's used to treat high blood pressure and diana atrial fibrillation and tremors. It's also used to prevent migraines and help control thyroid and adrenal gland tumors. It is a beta blocker that works in the heart muscle and where it opposes adrenaline and therefore lowers the heart rate. Uh, toxicity of propanolol will cause bradycardia, hypertension, and cardiac failure. And again, uh, not often monitored and ordered, but there you go. Amiodarone is used in ACLS, that's advanced cardiac life support, for pulseless V-fib, ventricular fibrillation, or ventricular tachycardia. It is a thyroid hormone analog. It blocks potassium channels in the heart, um, and the therapeutic range is 0 0.5 to 2.0 milligrams per deciliters, and it has many toxic effects. Verapamil uh, treats angina, that's chest pain, hypertension, arrhythmias. It blocks uh, calcium channels in the AV node, and um, toxicity shows up as hypertension and ventricular fibrillation. And that is the last one. Thank you.